Hey guys, welcome back. Today I have a really fun video in store for you guys. Last year I did a Valentine's Day themed video that was a romantic date night in, and I showed you guys this gourmet dish that you can make for your significant other, and it was a huge hit. So this is gonna be more for like a girl's night in, so I made everything a little more casual, kind of like you're out having cocktails with your friends, but you can do this at home. And also everything that I'm sharing with you guys, you could prepare the night before and then just whip it together within 30 minutes the day of, so you're not scrambling, doing a bunch of things all at once. So we're gonna start off by making this delicious coconut shrimp that you guys are gonna wonder why you haven't made it before because it is so easy to make. The trick to making this coconut shrimp super fast and easy is to have all of your items laid out in an assembly line. So I'm starting by seasoning my shrimp with a little bit of garlic salt. I made sure to get my shrimp divined and also the largest one that I could find. In the next plate, I have my flour and I'm adding paprika and also garlic salt to it. Then I mix everything together. And in the third plate, I have my panko crumbs and also coconut shavings. You could use any kind of coconut shaving. You could use shredded or the tiny pieces like I show you guys in this video. And then I also add garlic salt to that and I give it a good mix. In a bowl, I also have an egg wash, which I also added garlic salt and paprika to it. Once everything is laid out, I start by dipping the shrimp in the flour mixture, then I dip it in the egg mixture, and then immediately I put it in the panko crumbs and coconut. Now, if you want it extra crispy, this part is optional, but you can dip it back in the egg mixture and then add a second layer of that coconut panko. If you do end up going this route, you are gonna need to double the amount of coconut and panko crumbs, and you're also gonna need to double the amount of eggs that you use. I quickly realized that using chopsticks was taking way too long, so I just used my good old hands. So once the shrimp is evenly coated, I'll put it on a rack so that it doesn't stick to the pan, and then I put it in the refrigerator while I create the sauce. So it was in there for about 10 minutes. So for the sauce, you're gonna need mango, lemon, lime, cilantro, garlic, and also a little bit of sugar, just to taste and make it a little bit sweeter. And then my secret ingredient, a tiny bit of tahini. You can also put it in the blender if you don't want it to be chunky and you want it to be smoother. That'll work totally fine too. So now we can go ahead and cook our shrimp. I really like making it on the pan with coconut oil. It adds extra coconut flavor to it and it also makes it super, super crispy. So I just put the stove on medium high and you only need to cook it for about two to three minutes on each side. The shrimp cooks so fast and keep an eye on it because of the coconut shavings, it will burn very easily. So if you see that it starts to brown a little bit too fast, just turn the heat down a little bit. And this next part is optional, but when you remove the shrimp from the stove, you can add some lemon wedges to fry them and these make a really pretty garnish you can lay it out on your plate and then just lay your shrimp on top if you guys are still watching and you are enjoying this video so far make sure you subscribe before you leave because I upload videos like this all the time and also click the little bell so you're notified of all my future uploads. So I'm just making a really simple dish with this. First I'm gonna cook my pasta and uh, the trick to making really good pasta is salting the water. If you don't salt the water, your pasta is gonna lack flavor. Um, and then I just bring it up to a boil and I'll cook my pasta following the instructions. And then in a separate pan, I'm making an infused oil. So I added extra virgin olive oil, chili pepper flakes, lemon zest, and also minced garlic. And I'm just gonna put it on really low heat and leave it on there for about 10 minutes or until my pasta is done cooking. So once the pasta is fully cooked, I drained it and uh, then I added it to that pan that had the oil in it. And the pan is already off at this point. We don't wanna overcook the pasta. We just wanna coat it with that hot oil so that when we serve it and we add the grated cheese on top, it helps everything melt and all those flavors come together. And this is just such a simple, but delicious pasta dish. You can use any type of cheese on top, like Parmesan cheese will be delicious. I used a hard goat cheese I just wanted it to have a little bit more of a pungent flavor to it. I also just made one of these salads that come in a bag already. You can find them in a grocery store and just assemble them, put them in a nice serving bowl, and add that to your table. 
since you guys know that I am a terrible baker, I have found a way to cheat my way into making a really gourmet but delicious looking cake. It's what I like to call semi-homemade because half of it is bought, store-bought, and the other half we put together ourselves, but trust me, when your guests try this, they're not gonna care where it came from. So we're gonna start by repairing our strawberries and I'm getting the ripest strawberries that I can find and I'm adding powdered sugar to them. You just kinda wanna eyeball it and just add enough to coat all the strawberries and then you're gonna mix it. Just let it set while you prepare all your ingredients and you'll see that it's gonna start to form its own syrup and it's gonna sweeten the strawberries. And then I'm gonna get some cream cheese. I'm gonna make sure it's room temperature and if it's not room temperature, you can put it in a bowl of hot water and it'll get nice and soft. So then I'm putting the cream cheese in a bowl and I'm adding powdered sugar to that. And then I'm just mixing it until it's nice and creamy and smooth. Next we're gonna make some homemade whipped cream and homemade whipped cream is so easy to make. You just need heavy whipping cream and powdered sugar. You mix the two together until you have a nice fluffy consistency. All right, so now for the store-bought part, we're gonna be using this Sara Lee uh, pound cake. You're more than welcome to make your own pound cake from scratch if you are that talented, but I love Sara Lee and this pound cake is delicious. So all I'm doing is just cutting the ends off and I'm slicing it in half and then I'm slicing that half in half. So I'm forming almost like a tower of cubes. And then we're gonna start layering all of the cream cheese and the whipped cream that we made. So first I add the cream cheese, then I add the strawberries that have like the delicious syrup formed already. And then I add cream cheese to the other side of the cake and I just sandwich it together. And I continue doing that all the way to the very last piece. And now this is where the whipped cream comes in handy. So we're gonna use the whipped cream sort of as frosting and we're just gonna cover that entire tower and it's gonna look like one big piece of cake. That's it, you guys. So you could totally do this the night before and you could just wait to frost it the day of. And when you cut into it, you get these beautiful layers. It looks like you spent hours in the kitchen baking this cake, but it's our little secret that we didn't. <laughs> I have a few drink recommendations for you guys. I think any special occasion is like the perfect excuse to drink champagne. But if you don't like the taste of champagne, there are these different liqueurs that you can add to it. One of my favorite ones is this one. And this one is like a blackberry flavored liqueur. You just need very little. So you pour your glass of champagne, then you add a little bit of this on top. Not only is it gonna give your, your champagne a sweeter flavor, but it's also gonna make it look really pretty because it gives it kind of like a, like a purple tint to it. And then you can top it with some berries and that's a really fun, festive way of presenting your champagne. Um, if you don't, if you just don't want champagne, period, this is something that my husband and I get every Valentine's Day. It's one of our favorite drinks. It is so good. It's not overly sweet. It's not dry. It's really refreshing. If, um, I'd recommend serving it really, really cold. So put it in your fridge the night before or in the freezer a couple hours before um, your guests arrive. But let's say you're having cocktails instead. You're having like martinis. A really fun thing that you can do is get ice cubes and fill them with water, of course, or you can even fill them with the cocktail that you're actually gonna have and then put flowers inside so this idea I got from a restaurant that we went to in New York a couple of years ago they had this drink called something orchid and they served it in a um, kind of like a margarita glass and then they had these ice cubes these ice cubes are actually meant for whiskey so you can find them in any liquor store as it melts into your cocktail it just looks beautiful and you don't have to continue adding ice to it you kind of just have the same ice cube all night because it does melt very slowly so yeah I just think these are really fun fun ways of presenting your cocktails for a special occasion thank you guys for watching I really hope you enjoyed today's video if you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up before you go and also check out last year's Valentine's Day video if you do recreate any of these recipes I would love to see pictures I'm over on snapchat Instagram and also on Facebook just tag me use my hashtag Miss Liz Hart and I will talk to you guys next time Mwah. bye